I found a job posting for a prototype machinist, but I had never heard of the company before. I was really curious about what they made, so I googled their name, and it turned out they were worth almost a billion dollars. I was like, whoa, this could be a pretty nice shop. And they make high-end semiconductor lasers, so I bet the work's pretty cool. So I put my application in, and I got a call for an interview. When I got there, I met the lead man, and I could tell right away he was very old school in his ways. He brought me back to the shop, and when we walked in, it wasn't anything close to what I was expecting. They had two track mills and a small manual tool room lathe and a room that was about a 1,000 square feet. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean the people working there are less talented or don't know what they're doing. But for a company of that caliber, I was expecting multiple high-end 5-axis mills, maybe a mill turn or machines similar to that. For what these guys were trying to do, the equipment they had just wasn't capable enough to keep up. I remember thinking, how can a company worth this much money that's developing cutting-edge technology have a prototype department with such primitive machine tools? The reason was, the lead man wasn't fluent in CNC machining, and he couldn't comprehend the amount of time and effort he was wasting by trying to run these parts on these older machines. I don't blame him for doing what he knows, and upper management didn't know the difference, so they just trusted him to be making the right calls. But the lead man knew it was time to step out of his comfort zone. So we continued the interview and he showed me some prints and the parts were actually fairly interesting and somewhat challenging, which got me really excited. We talked about how their engineers are unhappy with how long their lead times are. And after looking at the shop equipment, I wasn't surprised, but I knew there was a solution to that problem. He mentioned that they just got Mastercam, but they don't know how to use it. And they basically just use it to export 2D DXF files to program parts on the track mill. I was blown away by that statement. You mean to tell me you are using one of the most powerful CAM softwares on earth to export 2D DXF so you can program a 25-year-old track mill? And he pulled up a part that they needed to make and asked if I wanted to play around with it in Mastercam, which was his way of giving me an open invitation to prove myself. I said absolutely. In less than five minutes, I defined my stock and tool and wrote a simple 2D dynamic contour program to rough out the entire shape of the part. His response was, oh, you actually use Mastercam for what it's for. And based on that one simple toolpath, he offered me the job right then and there. Now make no mistake, there's nothing complex or special about what I did. But since he was so old school, he had clearly never seen it before, and for him, it was the beginning of the solution to his problems. Outside of needing better equipment, he needed someone that knew how to utilize Mastercam to increase productivity, and with that one toolpath, I demonstrated I could do that for him. And that's what I love about this trade. It's not about what degree you have or don't have. It's about what you can do, and everything I demonstrate in that interview can be learned online for free. I told him I'd think about it, and I went back and forth about taking the job. I loved the idea of going to a shop that had a lot of cool work and opportunities to help solve problems. But I didn't really like the idea of running old, outdated equipment that's nearly obsolete in the advanced manufacturing world of today. It wasn't a guarantee that the company would buy better equipment, so I looked at taking the job as a risk and not one that I was willing to take. The company I currently worked at ended up offering me more money and opportunities to learn, so I didn't end up accepting his offer, but I still wonder to this day how much I could have helped that company reach their goals. If you're an operator and you want to become a programmer, utilize every resource you have to learn how to program. And then when one of these opportunities comes along for you, don't be afraid to go after it. And don't settle for a traditional resume. You know, we live in a digital world. Make videos or send photos, show them your workmanship, and bring parts if you can. These things will go far beyond words on a piece of paper, and it will prove to them that you are legit. And it could be the difference between landing a job you really want or not. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Keep making the world a better place one part at a time. And if you want to learn Mastercam, check out our online academy for free tutorials. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button on your way out. Peace.